Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. Uh, on this episode, we're all recording from our lairs because of the, uh, the pandemic, <laughs> uh, as you can see. Um, so we, we, we thought we'd talk about on this episode is what sci-fi to binge watch while you are locked at home. Uh, we've all been watching various shows, and we're going to give a quick kind of rundown on the things that we're binge watching and, we, and things that we recommend uh, that that could burn away the hours, <laughs> getting acquainted with uh, some new new stuff and some old stuff as well. So who wants to start to, with one, one thing that they've binged recently? Um, well, I recently binged. I, I have been watching things that have been non-science fiction like Rome. I mm -hmm. love Rome, um, which is fine. I mean, if you guys wanted to talk about stuff that isn't exactly science fiction, I do have some horror stuff on my list. Um, but the first thing I actually put on my list is Cloverfield. It's an awesome movie. I think it handles, um, it handles that universe very well. The monsters are really cool. They, um, there's a lot of intent happening that's hidden that you don't really understand. Um, and mm. I just think that the way the story unfolds is unique and very powerful storytelling. The movie was just fantastic. And th this was the first Cloverfield movie. The second one um, is, is a very different kind of movie. What was the second one called? Do you guys remember? It was like it was something called... Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, that's Cloverfield yeah. Lane. Yeah. Very it good. Was cool. It was very, very good. Yeah, but you know what's funny but, is but I it's wanted a different the, movie, you're right. I wanted it the is. movie to start where it ended. Yeah, well, I'm odd. hoping, you know, yeah, it's, it's always like you, you're left hoping, is this the middle of a trilogy, right? Is there going to be a third movie? Sure. Uh, what I liked about it, and this was also true of the remake of War of the Worlds, um, is that the focus shifts to, not, you, you're, you're, yeah, you are some random person who has no idea what's going on. You're not the military or the government who knows what's going on and is making yep. decisions. You're just in the chaos, on, you know what I mean, on the front lines, yeah. bewildered by what's going on. And that is a very powerful way to approach a story like that. Totally. It's its own different, you know, perspective. And it, I think, and that this is what Cloverfield, the first movie had, is it made me really feel like I, I was inside the action in a different kind of way. You know, you're not going from like scientists to, to the government and all that. Um, so anyway, I, I think that both of those movies are, are really cool. And I think that they give you a very different mm -hmm. take on the whole thing. Um, and yeah, you're right, Steve. One more movie would be awesome. I mean, yeah. those monsters are just so epically cool. There is something so doom about them, you yeah. know, like the end of times about them. I just, mm -hmm. yeah. I really dig it. Well, Jay, since you mentioned Rome, I will start mm -hmm. with a new series that I just finished uh, binge watching the first season, Pennyworth. The connection to Rome is that this was developed, you know, created and written by Bruno Heller, mm -hmm. same guy who wrote Rome. Very, very good. Ah. So Pennyworth refers to Alfred Pennyworth, who is Batman's butler, um, yep. nice. right? Bruce Wayne's butler. And this is, you know, represents, I see, the evolution of this character, you know, going back to the old days, you know, Alfred was in the background, he was the butler, and, you know, he clearly knew what was going on and was very helpful to Batman in certain ways, but was really just a very good butler to, to yeah. Batman, right? Uh, if you, either of you watched um, the series Gotham, yeah, which is, is very good, I've been enjoying that as well. I thought it goes off the rails a little bit, but a good series also if you're looking, if you really like the superhero genre in the Batman world. Uh, and that focuses more on uh, Gordon um, mm -hmm. before he's Commissioner yeah. Gordon. And he's really the hero. Batman's a young boy in this series. But in that series, Alfred is an ex military badass, you know, really. <laughs> um, awesome. And now Pennyworth really follows that kind of evolution of the character. This is now. Uh, Alfred yeah, Pennyworth as a young man in his 20s, in his early oh, 20s, wow. um, was in the, just after getting out of the military, was in the military for 10 years. And so I guess he must be in the old, upper 20s, like maybe from 19 to, to 29. Mm -hmm. And then it really seems younger than being in the military for 10 years. Must have really gone in very young. And he is a serious badass. Um, nice. but, but very James Bondy, you know, very 
very suave, you know. Elegant, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very elegant. Suave. But very intelligent, you know, uh, not not like a Rambo kind of badass, just like a really savvy, you know, spy like uh, kind of character. Very, very good. It's also in the in the Batman, you know, DC universe. It's a darker version of our reality, and they do that very well. It's in the 1960s. So there's a lot of great music. Really enjoyed the first season. Very, very good, uh, especially if you are into super the superhero genre and uh, Batman in specific. I like when they take these what are secondary or background characters and really expand their backstory. You also, yeah. and this comes out very early on in the series, so I'm not spoiling anything, uh, Alfred is interacting with a young um, Thomas Wayne, Bruce's father. This is also oh, how, cool. this is the story of Whoa. how they meet. And also greatly expands the backstory of Batman's father, of Thomas Wayne. Yeah. It, um, and other characters as well. So that sounds awesome. I, I, I'm going to definitely turn. Wow, out that very sounds good. great. Yeah, I was sold when I found out it was written by Bruno Heller. You know, because I loved Rome yeah. as well, uh, and it, it did not disappoint. Very, very good. So yeah, and this was sort of came out of nowhere. It's like, oh, look at this. What is this? You know. So it's it's it was a good surprise, and I enjoyed the first season. Definitely recommend it. So I have another pick here. Um, I I put on my list Forbidden Planet. This is. The classic science fiction mm -hmm. film from the fifties, uh, screaming you know, just, for a remake, but yes, it, you know the 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 incredible thing about Forbidden Planet is that it aged it. so Say exquisitely it. well. Yes, it aged so weirdly well. I, I you could go back and watch it today. It's definitely got a fifties vibe to it, but it has a very the special effects are dated but, but solid. Still, yes, yeah, still solid. 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 And I think don't, I you don't cringe when you watch it like you do a lot of, you know, we love sci-fi, right? All of us love sci-fi. I love sci-fi. I'm nuts about it. But but the 50s sci-fi, it's kind of quaint and always in that cool. I don't really watch a lot of it. That show I could watch. It was ahead of its time. Every year. It was. Yeah. But also, I think because it was sort of always campy to us, it's just as campy now as it was 45 years ago. Yeah. So that's why it aged well for us. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, right. I mean, I, I, you're right, Steve, because when we saw it, it was campy. It was campy. I, I, I get it. But it, the movie, when they made it, they didn't want it to be campy, right? That wasn't what no, they were No, not going at the for. time. It was like it, cutting edge sci-fi. It is kind of steeped in the 50s, though. You could tell it was made in the 50s. Totally. But I really recommend you watch it because it, you'll learn a lot about science fiction and you'll see things happening in that film that that other movies and, and books mm -hmm. have been inspired by. Um, and it is a beautiful film to look at. It was, it was, it's just shot so beautifully. Um, and we've talked about it many times. Yep. Is that, that's not the same exact ship, that, but that's, that's not the ship, but it's, you know, similar. could be, yeah, <laughs> could be a saucer, the, the classic saucer. Yeah. It was flying a flying saucer ship. ship. Yeah. All right. Who wants to throw down another one? I'll throw it down. Well, we'll keep going around. I'll throw down altered carbon. Um, so I we watched I watched uh, season one. I really enjoyed it. And then this is cyberpunk genre, which I love. Yeah, There's yeah. not enough, not enough cyberpunk in in this universe, and and it it, it follows the conceit of of uh, of disposable bodies and that you have stacks that you could that you could put into a, a body and to take over the body. So it so you so it brings in themes like immortality. What's it like? You know, if, if you can live pretty much as long as you want. And and of course, the, the difference between the rich people who could afford these bodies and the poor people who don't. And so it's, it follows that. And it's based on a series of books, which I, I've read all. The, I've read the entire series. Really enjoyed, really enjoyed it. I'm just kind of getting into the second one. So there's not a, there's not a lot I could say about that right now, but I'm enjoying it. And uh, special effects are interesting. The, um, you know, some of the technologies they explore are, are fascinating. But it's just a just a, a fun show that I, I can't wait to see how this goes, and maybe we could do a, a series wrap up for season two mm -hmm. of Altered Carbon. But I, but I'm really enjoying it, and I just love the idea that this somebody was passionate enough to create an entire series now in this cyber in the cyberpunk universe, which you just you know you just don't see a lot of that, and I yeah. don't see enough of it. Don't forget, there's a cyberpunk video game coming out very yes, soon. It's a 2077. Yeah, and uh, uh, yep. you know I've seen tons of imagery from it and you know there's been it's just been in the works for so long that everybody knows about it the thing i love about that is the gaming studio is very happy to say it's gonna when when it's done we're putting it out yeah. and that that mad respect for that um so if you're a fan of the genre wait for that game the game is going to be mm -hmm. amazing uh steve right. what do you think of 
what do you what did you really think of The Witcher now that you've had time to think about it? Loved it. I liked it, the, the series a lot. So I played one of the video games. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I'm somewhat familiar with the the story from that angle. I, I'm not somebody who read the books or the comics or whatever, the other manifestations of it. Right. But I liked it. Uh, so it it it's a, it is a it is a little campy, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like Doctor Who level. Like you know, like you kind of love Doctor Who, but you know, it's kind of campy science fiction. This is kind of campy fantasy, uh, yeah. but in a, in a kind of an endearing way that I enjoy. Yeah. I really liked it, and the the you know the, I thought the storytelling was good. I thought the characters were good. I it certainly captured my attention. Uh, I liked it. You know, we reviewed it separately for you know, AQ six. So if you could mm -hmm. watch that review where we talked about the, yeah. the magic system has some interesting angles to it, but also is kind of wonky in certain ways, um, which, which I'm you often very particular about, you know, but, uh, overall I liked it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I, walked, I walked into it Jay blank. I had really had no knowledge, um, of anything that came, that came before I, w I walked into it, watched the first, the first episode and I'm watching the episode. And I'm like, Oh man, this is, seems like a wannabe, kind of series and I wasn't really into it. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to watch episode two. And then, and then the fight scene, the major fight scene happened yep. at the end. And I was like, all right, how many fight scenes have we seen? Oh, about a quintillion, right? This yeah. one was creative and was good. brutal and yeah. so well choreographed. It just sucked me in. And then once I got into episode two, I was, I was addicted. I was like, I got to, I couldn't wait till the next episode. This was a fun, a fun series. I had the opposite reaction to the Iron Fists, where yeah. the fight scenes were so bad, it ruined yes. the series for me. Yep. Yes. Which Absolutely. I never thought, like, I never thought that would happen. But, you know, it's a kung fu show, and the kung fu was bad. It yeah. just, I couldn't <laughs> no, right? watch like, it. Come on. I couldn't excuse. watch it. No Steve, I have a that. theory that <laughs> the Iron Fist ruined all of those. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it detuned the quality of all the other superhero shows that it was it was in bad a, and there were good with. things about the series but they, they had their tower of terror episode you know mm -hmm. and it was so bad that was the that's what broke it for me like, i can't watch uh, beyond this point it was just terrible all right oh, man. so i gave you a, a new series that i thought is worth binging yes Penny worth i'm going to give you an old one here we go um, bob you ready yeah star trek deep space nine yeah. sure is awesome. It, I forgot how good it was. Yeah. So first, I think that there's a lot of old series, 20, 30 years old, that hold up really well. And uh, like another one that would be worth, I think, going through, for example, is Babylon 5. Yes. But I also think any of Guaranteed. the Star Trek series, any of the Star Trek series you can go through as well. Mm -hmm. And we're probably going to work our way through all of them. But I started with Deep Space Nine. The other thing is... So I'm just finishing season five. There are seven yep. seasons with 20 episodes or 20 yeah. plus episodes per Remember season. Remember those so days? It's a ton that's of content, man. a lot of content. But the uh, the thing that's great is I really forgot all the details. It, it is like watching it anew. It really sure. is. Yeah. I remembered the big brush strokes and everything, but the, I forgot enough of it that it is like it's like watching something new and old at the same time. It's very enjoyable. Who's your and favorite I, character, Steve? So um, it's hard to say. I like. I mean, I've always going back originally, and still I like Bashir because mm -hmm. yeah. he just you know he just I always like when he's on camera. Uh, but they're all good. They're, you know, I like all the characters, um, and they're I they're they're I like the fact that they're often very fearless in their writing. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, what I noticed is they're, at least culturally, um, a lot of the aliens are alien, you know, right. like the, they really, they really double down, you know, like the Ferengi, their females are naked and subservient and they're completely unapologetic about it. And that's their culture. And that's the way it is. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there are things and they don't soften it. You know, they don't soften the rough edges of these other cultures that we're interacting with that the Federation's interacting yeah. with. So I, I love that. that. That drives, I think a lot of the the plot and a lot of the conflict in a good way, in a way that I like, I, that I like to see. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I'm enjoying the ride watching it again. I'm, I'm probably going to, when I'm finished with this, go to some other Star Trek series, maybe enterprise or, 
um, whatever one of the other ones and, and start working my way through it as well. Definitely. I'm definitely due to see all of them again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so my next one, uh, this is a, a super quick one. The Mandalorian. Watch it. It's yeah. awesome. Uh, if you love Star Wars, you should really enjoy this. The, you know, the season two is coming out within a month at this yeah, point. Can't wait. Just watch it. I don't even need to tell you why. We have a whole review on it. It's a great show. Yeah. Action is great. The, the characters Robots. are a lot of fun. Yeah. Stay, Egg of, Egg you know, 11. The, it it's oddly has high stakes and low stakes, stakes at the same time. They, they hit this beautiful balance. And then if you're really interested, watch the making of The Mandalorian because they're in, a, 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 they're in a set that it has 70 foot LED screens or something ridiculously high. Maybe it's not 70 Whoa, feet. Where'd you see that? Where'd you see the oh, making Bob, of Oh, Bob, you, you got to go YouTube. on YouTube. So when wow. you are watching The Mandalorian, the background can be seen by the actors. Because it's on a super HD LED wow. screen that wraps around like this, so they're inside the set with this gigantic screen around them, and you you they can change the scene in seconds if they wanted to to shoot another scene. It's oh just amazing. God. Yeah, you gotta watch. The, you gotta watch. Cool. That, Since that, you bring up a Star Wars, you know, genre series, if you're somebody who likes Star Wars but didn't watch any of the cartoons because they're cartoons, mm -hmm. watch them. They're, they're I think actually like. You have the um, Clone Wars, yep. uh, Star Wars Re Rebels, and then uh, the more the most recent one, the um, or is it Star Wars? Is it Rebels or Rebellion? I think Rebels, and then Resistance is the, yes. is the more recent one. Rebels, Rebels, I thought, was the, my favorite of those three. Yeah, but it they're was great. all good. They're all good. They have time because it's a series to really go into the lore and a lot of the background of some of the characters and everything and. The storytelling is really fantastic. Better writing than a, and characters than, than some than of the of movies. The movies. The, I mean, really, it's the, that is in a way um, the the best venue for the Star Wars you know uh, storytelling. That's the best happening. compliment I can give them is that they feel like Star Wars. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's what some of the movies just didn't quite capture Star Wars to me and didn't didn't give me that vibe. They do it, and uh, Rebels was just. Fantastic. The Rebels is my favorite. The re resistance. I didn't like the aesthetic changes that they made. Oh, yeah. that stinks. But I got yeah. used to it. But I didn't like it. I thought the Rebels was better. Yeah, they they went to a very stylized, cartoony yeah. look, but it's still to, to the writing is still great. Look, yeah. yeah. So I have a lot more guys, and I think you know it might be good if we just kind of throw them down a little mm -hmm. bit quicker, if you don't mind. Um, sure. The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Yes. This is a prequel to the movie, The Dark Crystal. Mm -hmm. um, they're using real puppets, very high production value, beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. Gorgeous. And, Gorgeous. Love it. And a, a good, intense, worthy uh, series to watch if you are if you like The Dark Crystal. But The Dark Crystal, you know, didn't, a lot of people say it didn't age well. I think this series is what The Dark Crystal could be yes. if they redid it. The Dark Crystal did not age well, partly because of the 80s vibe Aesthetic, that yeah. it gives yeah. off, which doesn't fit. Like, you can't watch a fantasy movie set in the 80s, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> they, they fixed that. They totally fixed that with the with the new series. They upgraded the the everything, yeah. and uh, it really is just luxurious. It's a it's a wonderful experience, and the story is great. And again, it's dark. Shit happens. It's not cartoony. It's not for yeah. kids per uh, se. This, there, there are stakes in this show. You there's stakes. Yeah. You can enjoy it on an adult level, which is great. So yeah, I highly recommend that that one as well. My next one, Stranger Things. Of course, yeah. yeah. I enjoyed every season of it. The first every season, season. The, the first season is a must see just because of it, mm -hmm. the novelty of it came out of nowhere, the, really. The show, but I have to admit, every season came, I watched it, and the latest season, which was what season three, three. Yep. I was, I liked season two. I yeah. really liked season three. Season three, man, yeah, it it got real. It killed it. it. Yeah, fantastic show. And there's uh, going to be another season. That's right. Yeah, it's just yeah. too too popular. Now this is a this is one that Steve turned me on to Avatar: The Last Airbender, not the movie, the cartoon series. The series. It's a fantastic really? show. Really, great. Fantastic. The it 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 goes in places that it, that you didn't expect. It's it it really doesn't feel like a cartoon after you watch it for a little while because it, it has some really good. Did you solid, finish it? Where are you in it? I'm almost done with it. Okay. Yeah. I, I really mean, good. I, yeah, the I, characters I just, have arcs. I love I gotta, it when you have a character that has an arc. Yeah, you know, you're on this. That. 
<laughs> it's yeah, I know. It's like it's not like they, they don't end up five seasons later or whatever that where they the same started person they were. Right. Yeah. Um, I want to do a Harvey. full review oh. of this show. I think we it deserves a full review by us. Yeah, Bob, and so there's a sequel, you know, The Legend of Korra, which is just as good. It's well, great. Okay, I didn't know. Just flat I out just as good. List. Yeah, oh, just man. as good. I, I've seen just a few episodes here and there. Loved them all. I'm like, damn, that's really kind of cool. I got to I gotta check this series out. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah let me wait till I watch the whole damn thing. We'll, we'll review that's it. why the movie was so disappointing. Oh, God. It was so yeah. disappointing. Steve, I turned the movie off after five minutes it's oh. terrible it, it was lacked terrible. all integrity and it lacked any kind of legitimacy it, it's remarkable if i tried to make something worse i don't think i could it was just bad and that was shamalama ding dong right the yeah. guy who made yeah. that, he, he and, just fell and off it, whatever horse whatever. that guy was on he fell off it was completely. bad it was, i mean it was, i ago. saw the previews i was so excited for it and then oh, it was horrible i remember the, you and, were disgusted well it was also that they blew the special effects yeah you know the whole world is built around the benders who wield you know fire water air and earth and yep. you know their control of these elements is like the core that uh, that drives this whole world and they just the special effects looked looked bad they were yeah, i agree so you lost the whole vibe uh, of everything it just took you right out of it but let's uh, face it it was written like a bad D D game yeah, <laughs> it, it just it just had that bite. to I think my wife came up with that line because we watched it and she's like, we are we role play better than that game. You know, it was just not when well, you're they try to take a whole to try to take a whole season yeah. and put it into one movie. And the writing was bad. They, you know, yeah. that's that takes really good writing to yes. take a yeah. whatever that was, 10 hours or so or more of storytelling and compress it into two and make it work and hold together. And they didn't do it. It didn't nope. work. And I don't know if that's possible or not. Um, but so at least work. you have at least you have the cartoon, and it's, it's yeah. Just watch uh, the cartoon. It's know? adult worthy. Trust if me. they wanted to do live action, honestly, they should have done a series. Yeah. You well, know? maybe you know that you was right say, before you the could series. Say that about a lot of things. Or yeah, just don't try to tell the whole story. Pull out one little thing. <laughs> yeah. Do a do a prequel and or go something. Go to town on it. Yeah, well, take just your time with it. You tell know, a different story in that world that works for a two-hour movie. Yeah. You know? I don't All know. All right, let's move through it. these next ones quick. So let me the throw out two, Jay. Got two Go anthologies, ahead, two great anthologies. If you've seen them, watch it again. If you haven't, you have to watch them. Black Mirror and Love, Death, and Robots. Yeah. Yep. I mean, this is great anthology, creative writing, special effects. There's just love so much, both. so much to love. Um, and if you've seen Black Mirror multiple times, go through it and watch the, the few episodes that really stick out to you. Mm -hmm. Sure. They're so worth watching over and over. Wonderful stuff. Um, okay. I, I put it on my list, The Boys. Uh, ah. Again, this is this is this, uh, a show that came out of nowhere. When's it comes from back? a graphic novel. I'm going to find out right now. Season two is going to be out within a, within a month or so again. No way. Really? Yes. Yes. Um, it was my favorite TV show of 2019. Yeah. The Boys. Very good. It's the premise is what if superheroes were actually real in the world that we live in today? How would they manifest and what would be the outcome of that? If it's they were if wonderful. they were personality wise regular people and not super boy scout good guys. Right. right. You know, and they were just basically like scumbags, you know, douchebags with that kind of power. And also, like the corporate culture gets their fingers in them. Yeah, of yep. course. And Billions all of the other made. things in like religion and politics and everything. Like, how would it all inter interact? Yeah, it it made it feel real. You know, yes. yeah, in a, in a dark so, and scary way. Realer than any superhero show or movie you've ever seen. Which is like, a sad is commentary, but yeah, <laughs> on is, humanity. But but, I, yeah, when I watched so. Avengers, I'm like, man, that seems so real. They did say that in Avengers is great. The first Avengers movie blew my mind. It still blows my mind. Yeah. But when I watched the boys, I'm like, oh man, nobody has even come close to hitting hitting it that far out of the park of reality. That is real. Well, like, yeah, when you watch it, you're like, yeah, of that's course. really how it would be. You know, yeah, yeah, and, like right? we kind of <laughs> we kind of know that like the Avengers are like part of what we enjoy about it is that they're really good guys, yeah. you know, and then they kind of sometimes explore their weaknesses and their failures. But at the, at the end of the day, they're like preternatural good guys. Yeah. But this is just like regular, ethically regular people 
yeah. who who are then yeah. have this awesome power and succumb to all of the temptations that that would bring. One recommendation that's actually two, it's a, it's something old and new. Mm -hmm. So Penny Dreadful yeah, it's an old series, wonderful. several seasons, wonderful, the acting, wonderful. The acting. The acting, the actors and actresses uh, were fantastic. Real quick, as a call out, because if you like horror-based movies or TV shows or books, this is a horror TV show that has a, a, a catalog of wonderful, yeah. skilled actors. And the best possession scene or the, the, this actor that explored being possessed in a way that I have never seen it done. It absolutely shocked and scared me. It was mm -hmm. so well done. Masterclass. She, she, she did such a good job. Like, I, I still can't believe it. I'll go back and watch clips of it from YouTube and still get creeped out when I watch it. So the whole thing is worth watching just for that. But I did enjoy the whole series. Yeah, mm -hmm. I loved it. Loved it. Uh, and But the, here's the thing. There's a, a sequel, sort of. It's a, it's a, a new uh, Penny Dreadful series. Penny Dreadful... City of Angels. It takes place in 1938 in Los Angeles. It's kind of the build up to World War II. Mm -hmm. Very different story, different people. Different, Same universe? I believe so. Um, okay. But there's no, no reason to direct think connection yet. so far. So uh, it's a set, totally separate story. Uh, but it's Penny, Penny Dreadful. And I saw, the, you know, this is dropping once a week. It just started. Saw the first episode. Oh loved my God, it. Oh, man. Really wow. good really good it, my so last I'm, recommendation is the haunting of hill house did ooh, you guys see that it? Cor courtney and i my wife and i watched it and i was going in highly skeptical i'm like i don't want to watch this i don't really want to watch like haunted tv shows like you know i was like being a little like no one's going to even come close to penny dreadful um it surprised me it was creepy they were able to to maintain the creepiness over mm -hmm. the episodes, which which I've seen other shows that have had a hard time doing, and and it was very satisfying. I really enjoyed it. It, it was it, great. It, it was great. It ended well, which was not usually the case in horror movies for me. I usually don't like horror movie endings. I do like the, the ending that this show had. So overall, did you know Jay that yeah. there's going to be a season two, mm -hmm. and there's a season <laughs> two. And it's a completely different group of people. So they're doing it like an anthology. Okay. Right? Yeah. We've seen these before. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I think like the same house, but a different time, different people, whatever, different story. Okay. I predict that just like the other anthologies that did this, that none of them will come close to the first season. Yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to reap to catch lightning twice. Right. I mean, it's hard right. to repeat nothing like the first season of stranger things. Nothing's going to have the impact that that had because you can only be new once. Yes. You know, uh, so there you have it, guys. We gave you 20 cool shows, about 20 shows <laughs> to watch. If you haven't seen any of them, my God, you know, you have way more to go. Hopefully for you, the pandemic won't end too soon because you got to get a lot of these shows <laughs> in. Um, the, when we tell you that, believe me, we left off so much because yeah. there's so much good content out there. But that there was today. the cream. Those are the, those were, I think, a, that's a good yeah. place to start. Yeah. If you're yeah. Looking for stuff I, I totally bend. agree. We, we also wanted to give you an array. We didn't want it to all just be science fiction. Uh, you know, I realized when I was going through it, like, oh my God, how can I not tell them about this show? You know, like, yeah. you know, like Penny Dreadful as an example. You got to see it. You got to see that it's show. It's speculative fiction. It, it fits in the broader, yeah, yeah. The broader category. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you enjoy if you enjoy Alpha Quadrant 6, please consider becoming a patron of ours. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Alpha Quadrant and the number six. And you can go to our website. You can also like us on our YouTube channel. You can click the bell when new episodes come out. Uh, we've been trying to continue to put episodes out. We've really got our, our system down now, so we should be uh, getting back to one a week at this point. The pandemic did kind of kill us because we lost our studio because our studio is in Steve's basement <laughs> and uh, we can't be together. So this is our new virtual studio. Um, our backgrounds will change. Send us ideas if you want to see something funny on a background. No nudity, please, because Steve can't handle it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.